Okay guys, I just want to discuss a few things concerning the wiki sites. This first issue happened a little while ago and it has been resolved since then, but I'm bringing it up here so that it and other similar issues won't happen again in the future. So some time ago, the Tugger Intensifies, who I don't have any affiliation with as of now, discovered that someone had been putting up all these useless trivia info on the Thomas and Friends wiki site. One of them on the page for the song Monsters Everywhere. Someone had put in a note that the song was similar to the Disney songs Pink Elephants and Heffalums and Woozles. Why do I point this tidbit out? Because they were referencing my second Q&A video in which I gave a review on Tale of the Brave. Listen, whoever put this in, you shouldn't take what I say for granted. For the record, I am NOT part of the uh, Thomas and Friends production team. Not then, not now. Neither did I get this information from anyone who actually worked on the production team. It was my personal opinion that this song made me think of the aforementioned Disney songs. And as far as anyone is concerned, my opinion should not matter that much that it has to be written onto the wiki site, the encyclopedia website for all things officially associated with the Railway series and the Thomas and Friends television series, to which my thoughts are not. Anything that can be written on the site has to be confirmed by either any of the members of the Audrey family, any person who worked with them, or anyone who has worked on the Thomas and Friends television series, and I am none of the above. I am just an average fan, like the rest of you out there. I appreciate the fact that you guys all enjoy my content, but you shouldn't overestimate me and think of me as some sort of idol. It's not only embarrassing, but it also risks any potential of earning me a bad reputation. Constantly tell everyone else that I am the best, and they might mark me as a stuck-up boastful person. Which I am not. Even I think that some other YouTubers are better than I am. At least they've given people a good series of stories that they can enjoy. I'm still developing mine! I've already had a problem with this overestimation a few times before. Once in one of my other Q&A videos in which someone asked me if I knew about the progress of some Trackmaster product as if I was employed at the actual Trackmaster manufacturing facility. I DON'T EVEN COLLECT TRACKMASTER! Other times concern the Restore the Magic petitions in which people have been demanding me to release the director's cut of Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Guys, I am not in charge of the DC restoration and release project. I am merely a fan like yourselves. What I'm doing is supporting the petitions and spreading the word. Promotion! If you want to know what's going on with the Director's Cut, you should at best join the Restore the Magic group on Facebook. They have all the news to provide concerning what's going on. This next issue is a more recent one, and it has to do with my own wiki site, the Magic Road Adventures wiki site. This site, I welcome any contributions, but they have to be confirmed by me, because I'm the creator of the Magic Road Adventures, and the sole administrator of this site. As I am writing the Magic Red Adventures and know what's going to be in it and what's not going to be in it, I have the overall decision of what should be featured on the site and what shouldn't be. Now someone had made a contribution on this site a while back, that one being a page dedicated to Lady. However, in the summary, he wrote this message. Now, this wiki site has had a bit of history of pages being deleted. And if many of them were written by this one particular contributor, I can understand that he or she may be annoyed by my actions, but I DON'T appreciate this sort of behavior, especially if it's aimed at me, the administrator. This sort of behavior is intolerable and is deserving for a strike to be applied to the user, even a blocking to an extreme. There are rules on the wiki concerning behavior if you're not aware, so anyone who visits this site, look the rules over. As I've said before, I am the creator of the Magic Red Adventures, and I am the administrator for the wiki site. And I have the right to approve what info can say, and what info should be deleted. 
I've encountered issues in the past in which I find pages created about certain subjects that have little to no reference to the Magic Red Adventures series specifically, the worst of them being an article on a Thomas & Friends VHS release. For the record, my wiki site is dedicated to a fan series that I'm creating. It's not a place to put down information about Thomas & Friends official merchandise. That belongs on the official Thomas & Friends wiki site. VHS releases have no connection with the MRA, especially when it's not marked under said label. Other pages that have been deleted in the past includes articles on the Big Four, a page for each grouped railway company, as well as pages on Sodor's earliest railway companies. I've had to take these pages down because the Magic Red Adventures does not refer to, let alone focus, on the Big Four at all. Neither does it primarily take place during an era which the Big Four existed. If there is to be any mention of any of the railways on the British mainland at all, it should at least be a passing note on character pages prescribing where they came from. For example, if you want to write something about the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway, you write it on Thomas's page, explaining that that is the railway that he came from. And as for Sodor's pre-grouped railways, I had to take those pages down because I already extensively written about them in the historical section on the page of the Northwestern Railway. To have their information duplicated on their own individual pages is redundant and a waste of data space. Characters have also been through this predicament. I put up a few links and lists to refer to when creating these character pages. There are certain characters that I can choose from either Railway Series Canon or TV Series Canon depending on how reliable the said characters are. This is my own fan series and I can decide what and who can appear in the series whether you like it or not. There is a list of engines that work on the Northwestern Railway that I put down on the Magic Road Adventures wiki site, and it does not feature engines like Emily, Molly, Charlie, or Dennis or any of the others. I have my reasons behind this. A majority of engines introduced in the TV series are, are, are either incompatible to be really useful on a truly industrial railway like that of the Northwestern Railway, inefficient to be reliable for the needs of daily mass transport 24 hours per day. Percy's tractive effort is the minimum of how strong an engine can be on such a line. Or too incompetent to be responsible. Now, for characters like Emily and Molly, I'm not excluding them because I don't like them. I'm okay with them. Steven, I love his character. But at best, these sorts of engines antiquated locomotives can only serve on a heritage railway where the workload is not as demanding on them. The Northwestern Railway system is no heritage railway, and you can tell by the amount of stone trains, slate trains, ballast trains, express trains, commuter trains, the works. Engines that I truly don't like, such as Billy, Dennis, Charlie, the Logging Locos, and Samson, I'm excluding them because not only are they not efficient for the workload on Sodor, but they are the most dense characters that have ever graced the screen of Thomas and Friends. I don't care if people give the excuse, they have more personality than Lady does. At the very least, with what little Lady has to offer, she is kind, wise, empathetic, and certainly more competent than any of these engines. Lady never blamed Burnett for the accident long ago. She reminded him that magic never left his life. She wisely said that helping others bring magic in everyone alive allows Burnett to take charge whenever he needs to and has a big responsibility keeping the magic railroad energized and thusly keeping the universe intact. She shows signs of gratitude, respect, trust and companionship. It may not seem like much, but at least it's something. In contrast, Billy ignored Thomas's advice and directions and criticized him as a bossy engine. Dennis lied and made other engines do all the work his for him, all because he is too lazy to even move himself, let alone a line of trucks. 
Charlie constantly goes about the railway line telling bad jokes and literally sabotaging the company by pulling engines out of their job to have fun with him. The logging locos are irritable, disorderly, and... You're next to take a dip! Oh, you're no fun. Somewhat homicidal. I'm just going to say that they're insane. And Samson... Just what exactly is his IQ? When put on stone detail, he takes a number of trucks exceeding his haulage capacity and gets in trouble because of it. Getting stalled on uphills, becoming runaways downhills, gets berated by the fat controller, and does he resolve his problem? Far from it! He proceeds to take one stone truck per trip, likely causing a delay in stone export and creating a truckload of complaints from the clients. Worst of all, his driver and fireman don't say anything to him. They don't tell him to be sensible or to do his job properly. They just go along with his stupidity. Heck, if Samson's like this all the time, then he must need to be attached to Bradford all the time. Just what value do some fans see in these engines that make them worthy enough to garner defense for them? Whatever value they're thought to have had, I can't believe to exist because I just don't see it. The Fat Controller would never allow such incompetent and unreliable engines on Sodor. He's threatened to send Daisy away because she was too lazy to deal with one truck full of milk. The only saving grace that allowed her to stay on Sodor was that she redeemed herself by helping out after Percy's accident. Dennis has made no such redemption. And let's not forget when the Fat Controller sent Diesel packing for telling lies about Duck and Henry, or the other nasty engines who visit the island and cause trouble for the other engines. D261 was so arrogant to the other engines that he made a disturbance in the yard. D199 did nothing to move his train of tankers out of the way to let a passenger train pass through. He just sat on the line whining for a fitter. An old stock up damaged the engine shed because he was too biased towards steam engines to even share the sheds with them. If these engines can be sent away for causing all of these issues, I don't see why it couldn't be the same for Billy, Charlie, Dennis, the Logging Locos, and Samson. And don't get me started on the American locomotives. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. None of them, aside from Rosie, would be capable of running on Sodor in a realistic fashion. They're all just too big, Sam being the worst of them. So back to the point I'm trying to make, aggressive behavior is unacceptable on my channel and if I encounter it again, I will give a strike to whoever committed it. If you don't feel like you can behave well, then I recommend you see an anger management treatment before you make any more contributions to the site. And of course Lady's page will stay on, because of her relevance to the series. But if there are any pages that you'd like to create but have any uncertainty about it, run it by me first and I'll determine whether it will be acceptable or not. That'll be all.